And we're rolling. Oh, what to do? Hey, hey, uh, thanks for watching IYG, guys. This is Shade and... Let's go out. And what are we doing today, go out? Oh, uh, we're gonna take a gander at the, probably my most hyped Hearthstone set. Knights of the Frozen Throne. We could learn the same, but wars came out so different. Once upon a time, don't always have a happy end. But I never felt the way I did with you and It's a shame that only silence is where it's heading for. Really? You didn't like uh, Goblins or Snow? No. It, it, I mean, no. I mean, this is better than the uh, the Argent tournament for sure. But yeah, I mean, just based on what we—I mean, we know every card, but just looking at the cards, no gameplay. I'm really excited about this set. Now we'll see how the gameplay changes that. But. Yeah, I mean, I like this stuff, and especially in. Um... It's not Legacy, I don't forget what it's called. Wild, that's it. It's gonna be really good because it's gonna have really good combos with the old Next Ramus set, I assume. So Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, uh hopefully some of the current wild cards can actually like so hopefully some of the strategies get changed up and we don't keep seeing the same decks over and over. Alright, yeah, I agree. Um disclaimer In um, well, dis I have not actually been high rank in like four months so yeah i mean shade has been legend once i have been rank one once yeah so we're gonna be I, i'm mostly gonna be evaluating these in a vacuum and maybe trying to guess what archetype they go into and if i can i'll try to think of a new archetype but uh i don't claim to be a very good hearthstone player I also so we'll uh, see how this goes. hit rank 12 once in Arena, so or Arena Chest 12, and I'm just going to probably be looking at these cards to see how good they are, in my opinion, and you know, I'm stupid, so, you know, it might not be a good opinion. Yeah, probably. And you got the screen up, right? Yeah, yeah. So, alright, let's just dive Start in. Through. Crypt Lord. Three mana, one six. After you summon a minion, gain one health, and it also has taunt. So, I don't think you run this over Car Creep if you want a card like this. Uh, yeah, I guess not. Um, not familiar with that card since I don't play, but three for a one three. six that possibly goes higher is not horrible, but it's like that um, Makashan, I think I'm saying that, Warden, the 1-7 taunt, which is not played, but he's also higher mana. This will probably, like, slow down things like Pirate and other rush decks, but that that's it, right? Let me, okay, so Tark Reaper is a 3 mana 1-5 taunt that gets plus 2 attack on your opponent's turn. So it's a 3-5 on your opponent's turn. Oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, I fucking hate that thing. Yeah, that thing's way better. Play that thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you definitely don't play this card over Tar Creeper. Once Tar Creeper rotates, you probably still don't play this card. If if it got... Like, if it was just like Tar Creeper, like, after you summon a minion game one attack, it'd probably be really good. Like, almost too good, seeing as how egg drew it is. Uh, so, I mean, it's not busted, but it definitely doesn't see play. I gotta say, the art looks really good. I gotta say, the art... Oh yeah, I mean, it's it's a new Rakan, essentially. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. But, I mean, he doesn't yeah, even have an art. Mean... No, it's not like he's a bug or anything. I mean, like, they're... Blizzard's good about uh, eradicating types, so if they ever come up with a relevant type, he'll get it. But currently, no. He won't fit in any of Yeah. Alright, we go on to the next one? Yep. Uh, we'll call this one not bash, so it's Nash. Give your hero plus three attack this turn, gain three armor. 
So, like I said, this card's not bashed, but it's also in Druid. It's removal in Druid. So, it probably will see play in, like, the mid-rangey, rampy build. Yeah, the, uh, the one where it's choose seven armor or four attack. I think that's what it was. It was that was four mana. That was really good, so... Even if you didn't have Bandroll on the board, so this is going to be pretty good. So yeah, I mean, like, oh. it, yeah. Oh, okay. um, it it's just removal in a class that doesn't have removal, so it'll probably see play. Like, Mulps all play. Hell, sometimes naturalized sees play. So, Druid, so yes, I want this removal card, and I think they only have the only rule removal they have in this current standard is uh, the plus four attack or plus. Eight armor card that you were talking about, which is also three mana. It's not four mana. Oh, right on. So I think this sees play. It may probably a one of. Yeah. Uh, especially once yeah. that card rotates out, the Feral Rage, I think it's called. I think once that rotates out, if they don't get something to replace it, I think Nash slots in pretty. Easy. I think this card is going to be really good if Savagery ever becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah. Savage Druid coming. Oh gosh, that card's so bad. Alright, um... I feel like that's it with this card. I mean, like we said, it's pretty good. Probably gonna see play. Uh, it might see more play when the other thing rotates out. And this one's just like a pretty good... Like, it's like the Fandral ability, but weaker than the other card, basically. Yeah. It... Yeah, it's so close to that bash, but if they gave Druid bash, it would be too good. So they yep. gave him the next best thing. I mean, Druids have Swipe, which is probably top 20 of the best cards, probably, right? Uh, yeah, it's definitely top 5 in the class, I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah. Alright, let's just go to Web Weave. After all the ramp. It goes ramp, 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 then Swipe. Yeah, I think Innervate is my, uh, I guess, vote for best card in the game, followed by Power One Shield. Yeah. Concur. 100%. Anyway, Web Weave. Uh, summon 2, 1, 2, Poisonous Spider. It costs too much. I think this card sucks. I'm going to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, 5 mana, 2, 1, 2... Poisonous Spiders. Again, you can argue it's removal in a class that doesn't have removal, but is it really? Do you feel good playing this card? If it was, like, even one spider with charge, I'd consider that over two ch spiders that will probably die the next turn. This is one of those cards, if you're already winning, it helps you win more, I guess. Because if you're losing and you play this, the spiders just die, right? Yeah, I mean, like, if you don't have board, which if you, if you don't have board as Druid by you, the time you have five mana, you're not doing too hot anyway. Yeah. Like, if you, like, I don't know who wants this. I don't think Egg wants it because you probably just want to play Force of that one card that turns all your mana crystals into 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, Because yeah. that's just better for five mana. Um, so I don't think Egg wants it. I don't think Ramp wants this because for five mana, do you really want to play... Uh, a 2-4 with the power on the board. Like, that's not good tempo, so. I also I would like this to card add that, um, in the image, there is four spiders, and the card only gives you two. Yeah. Yeah, that's not very playable for Blizzard. I don't know. I don't think this card does anything. If it does, I'll be surprised. Man, it's not gonna do anything. Don't bullshit. That's why I'll be surprised. Alright. Oh boy, now we have a, a new druid of the Swarm. Ooh. I will go ahead and say that Ooh, I wow. always like the choose cards because at least one of them is at least okay, or one of them's amazing. Well, until it gets so, nerfed like Ancient of War. Yeah. Exactly. So, Druid of the Swarm, choose one, turn into. It's two mana, so choose one, turn into uh, a 1 2 poisonous. 
or a 1-5 with taunt. So, I mean, I will say that a 2-mana 1-5 with taunt is really good for the stats, but I don't think it's worth playing this card just for that. Yeah. It is important to note that both forms are beasts, so beast druid, you know, getting it going. Uh, a one two spider with poisonous is always gonna be neat, I guess, because again, it's technically a removal in a class that doesn't have removal. Isn't it the shitty version of the snail? Yeah, it is important to note that. Well, I don't think it's a shitty version of the snail because the snail is a two mana one two with poison and taunt. This you just lose taunt and you have that flexibility of becoming a one five. So. Yeah, I think the one five is way better though. I guess it depends on you because if you're, if they have something big and can't play anything else, you'll have to just tank a damage from it and then attack it with your little due to the swarm. But the one five is probably really good against any rush decks, and uh, I would just slowly scroll through the um, cards for you guys. This one is the I mean, one five taunt. Uh, it's a beetle, and this one is the, the other. The, uh, the problem with a one five is yeah, it's, it saves you face damage, but it doesn't necessarily kill anything. Yep. Let's just say pirate warrior because that's the go-to aggro deck at this these days. What does this kill in pirate warrior? It kills patches and uh, South Sea deckhand. No. No. What else? What else does this kill? Just those three, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also well, I mean, beast, yeah, though. Like... So there's that beast card that's one mana plus two plus two and draw, right? Yeah, Mark of the Wild or whatever. Yeah, I know you're talking. Not Mark of the Wild, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Mark of Yasuraj. Yeah. I mean, if you oh, have I mean, Mark of Yasharaj I mean, with this thing, our warrior loses, right? I mean, well, let's think about Fandral, alright? So, you become a 2-7 with Poison Anton for 2 mana? Yeah, I mean, that would be great. I don't think this card will be played, but it's good to dream. Right. Uh, and again, I, I only hold judgment mainly because... You technically get removal by a 1-2 with poison, but druids aren't slamming snails into their deck for the removal, so I doubt. Maybe we should Good invent move. the meta. That's right, and just shape it to our perfect design. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably be stuck at uh, rank 23. And that was not me farting, the chair went down. Let's take a look at this vice. Alright, go ahead. Strong Shell Scavenger. 4 mana 2 3. Give your top minions plus 2 plus 2. So, I mean, you summon a bunch of scarabs. They become 3 7s. It's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I don't think this card matters because. Other than, like, I don't think see Druid getting taunts on curve for this card to be good, because you pretty much have to hit. I mean, if you hit one thing, you technically get a Yeti in stats, but I don't know. I, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't, I'm, I'm already done talking to that, about that card. Yeah, I mean, the stats are trash for four mana. The effect, like, it's like Argus, right? That's what we compare it to. But if you have more taunt creatures already on board then it makes them stronger instead of, but yeah, that's, Argus is the thing I'm comparing to, these are stats and the relative taunt, even though the taunt abilities are different well, like I said, the stats suck I feel like Argus is way better because this one you already have to have taunt minions, and also I mean, another thing to add, if you're playing a fun deck though this would be really good, like one of those uh, decks where you just throw the 0-2 taunt and then target dummy, that's it. And then you play this. I mean, it's just a fun deck. It's not going to be, like, competitive or anything, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can do stuff with it, but I don't think you can do anything with your druid curve in order to make this cool. So, ignore it. I agree. Let's keep going. 
Spreading Plague, 5 mana. Summon a 1-5 Scarab, Scarab with Taunt. If your opponent has more minions, cast this again. So I have a question about this card. Um, do you keep casting it, or do you only recast it one time? I would assume that you just keep going until you have equal minions. Oh, right on. I mean, I don't think it's a good card, but that's a, it's a cool card. I mean, like, if it wasn't that case, I think it would just say, summon one five scarabs. If your opponent has more minions, summon another one. Instead, it says cast this again. So I'm pretty sure you keep going until you have equal minions to your opponent. Yeah, that would make sense because it's a plague. Yeah. Uh, again, if you really want to be kind of cool, I guess, you go spreading plague until into the strong shell scavenger. You know, army of three sevens. But this card only pays for itself if you summon three things. And if you're that far behind on board by turn five, I don't think you're, you're doing very well as a druid. Yeah. I mean, we already saw a whole bunch of other taunt stuff, and we we always said, or we were saying, rather, that it was probably good against Pirate. Well, we didn't even say it was probably good against Pirate. We said, if it was good against something, it might be Pirate. And if you play this against a Pirate deck, and I'm only saying Pirate because that's, like, the only Rush deck I think that's in the meta right now. I'm not sure. But if you play this against Pirate, they're just going to kill it real fast, and their creatures will still be alive. Like, this isn't that great. And Pirate doesn't even have that many creatures that stay on the board, right? There's, like, one to three at most. Unless you're doing really bad. Yeah, I mean, like, when I played Pirate for a while, I had maybe three three minions on board. They were just huge. Like, it was like, alright, deal with this 6-3, and then my giant fucking Berserker, and my Bitter Tide Hydra. And we'll see how it goes. Yep. So, I think we both think this sucks, right? On the next one. Here you go. Ooh, Fate Spinner. This card I like. This one's cool. So, Fate Spinner, 5 mana, 5 3. Choose a Death Rattle secretly. Uh, deal 3 damage to all minions or give them plus 2, plus 2. Wait a minute. Does that mean you give. You, all minions plus two plus two because that's what that says to me. Oh shit, I didn't even think of that. Ooh, man. That changes a lot. I mean, let's be honest. A five mana five three that says death rattle, do through damage style things, that's pretty fucking good. Yeah, that, yeah that's what that's I pretty sweet. Yeah, that, yeah. I, especially in Druid. Uh, we're going to assume that the plus two plus two goes to your minions. But I really don't know. Because it's, it's worded that way. Yeah. Um, so, but again, back to the whole thing of Druids don't really have removal. Dealing three damage to all all minions. I mean, yeah, it's really good. It's yours, but that's really good. In, in the deck that you would want, want that, three damage isn't, isn't going to kill most of your things. Well, uh, that was, that's the effect I would pick secretly. What's cool is both of them work with Fandral, right? That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really just... Assuming that the plus two plus two only works on your minions. Deal three damage to your enemy and one damage to yours. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think sure. this card sees play in sure. ramp. Yeah, I really like this card, actually. But the thing I'd have to mention, if you have Fandral, it's not a secret anymore. I mean... Let's be honest, you, your opponent can probably guess what you choose 90% of the time. Yeah, you must be real fun at parties. <laughs> you know. Alright, Ultimate Infestation. 10 mana, deal 5, draw 5, gain 5 armor, summon a 5-5 five, five ghoul. Woo, this is an interesting card. It's a... It, to me, it feels like a combination of a few Kazakus potions. Like, weaker Kazakus potions, obviously, other than the draw five. I mean, I think it's a fun card, for sure. I don't see it being great, though. Uh, Astral Communion. 
Okay, so if you're lucky enough to get the Astral Communion thing and get this really low turn, yes, it's good or amazing. Well, even then, it's not even amazing. You only have a 5-5. Five, five. And you draw five cards. <laughs> whatever. That's if, eh, whatever. It's, that's like, it's such an impossible <laughs> outcome. This card will see play. Only because the streamers and all the uh, high rated players want it to see play. Yeah. Like, they will play this yeah. card in some form of a match, of some form or fact that will make other people play this card. I mean, the effect is strong. Five damage, draw five, heal five, get a five. Oh, five. yeah, definitely. I just think, you know, ten mana. Ugh. Yeah, but druids can do, like, 14, have 15 mana uh, in one turn. So, like, you, at 10 yeah. mana, do stuff, and then you innovate, innovate coin, do something else. Or, if you want to be really cool, coon into this, into Druid of the Claw. Ooh. Yeah, that's a so good I mean, point. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, that 10 mana thing... It's like all the other 10 mana things, right? If you get it early, it really fucking sucks. That's why I hate 10 mana things. I hate anything that's like above 5. It's... I mean, I love the yeah. card. I, I like the art. I don't like the mana cost. I like the... I love the effect. It's really cool. But I personally don't think it's great. So, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, like, it's... It probably won't do anything great. It won't be busted, let's put that Although I think this card is sick in, in Arena. Oh yeah, in Arena, I'd definitely pick this. This card is sick in Arena. Like, nuts in Arena. Just like, top deck boys, off the top, kill your best guy, get my best guy, heal five, draw five, like, you, it's not. I will say, with Arena though, I tried to film some uh, Arena, and I thought I made good decks, and I just kept getting wrecked. So... I don't know, I lost my arena touch because I used to always get seven wins to, seven to, what is it, nine wins on average, and now I'm doing like three. Wait, no, I'm doing two because Ahun gave me a free win. Damn it. Oh, fuck, I suck at arena now. Yeah, I, I've done like one arena, and I chose Warrior back when Warrior was hot garbage in arena, and I haven't gone. Yep. Oof. Alright, so, I think this is great in Arena. I, personally, we disagree on if it'll see play, which you only think it'll see play just because the popular kids, the cool kids think it'll see play. So, alright. No, no, I don't, I don't know what they think. I just say, I, I think they'll want to make it work. I don't know what anybody, anyone else's opinion is on this. Yeah, definitely a streamer is going to try to make this work. They, like the Molten Giant, uh, Holy Wrap bullshit, they made that work. So, they made that work, so... Hemet. Yep. Yeah. Even before Hemet, though. But yeah, let's go, let's go on the next one. I do like the card. Our though. first. It, I it's, do it's, like pretty, it's pretty cool. Our, even the name was cool. Ultimate Infestation. Alright. We have our first Death Knight card. Our hero card, right? Go ahead. We're taking turns, if you haven't noticed. Oh, are we? Oh. So, not fearing the Pestilence. Seven mana. Choose one, summon two poison spiders or two sparrows with pawn. Gain five armor. And you also get a new hero power that is choose one plus three attack this turn or gain three armor. Uh, so it's important to know that both the card and the hero power work with Fandral. And it's also important to know that I really don't like this card. This card is so boring. Like. I don't know what to say. Like, it doesn't really form an archetype. It's not really a build around. I don't no idea what build of druid this goes into. It's so blur. I mean, what are the poisonous spiders and scarabs? Are they the same thing as the druid of the swarm? Yeah. Ugh. I mean, I was gonna, I was just gonna, gonna say if you had Fandral, it'd be really good. But I don't know. I kind of agree with you. This card kind of fucking sucks. Even even his ultimate or not ultimate hero power isn't that cool. 
I don't know, kind of just. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, well, yeah, like th this one's really disappointing, which is fine because Druid's been good for like ever. Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm, I'm okay with Druid taking a backseat for a while if that's the case, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Jay Druid will still do okay either way. So. Can you explain to people how this Death Knight thing works, by the way, in case they don't know? Oh, you just you play this card for seven mana. And your current hero becomes this hero. With a new hero power. And five more armor. Awesome. Well, yeah, so we both think this card sucks. I think it sucks for multiple reasons. It's a uh, on-play effect. We already said earlier the Druid of the Swarms we didn't think were good. I guess if you have Fandral and then play this, you get four crappy things on board. Which isn't horrible, so... That, it's like a situational thing. You'd have to have Fandral to be have this thing be okay. The hero power... I mean, the hero power, the plus gain three armor, I think is really good. But it, I don't think it's good enough to justify playing this card. Yeah, I mean, like, and it's not like ramping this out does a whole lot for you immediately. I, I mean, okay, so if you do ramp this out, let's say on turn four, you can get this out. With a couple of innervates and coins. I mean, it, it, it is kind of cool to have the hero power for that long. But, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that, that's enough. So, I was just thinking of this. Does Justicar work with these? I would, no. I mean, I mean, I would assume that Justicar just replaces your class hero power with the better one. So, it would change the plus three attack or plus three armor to plus two armor, plus two attack. Oh, lame. Alright. Let's go to Hadronox. Nine mana, three, seven. Death Rattle, summon your taunt minions that died this game. So, does Druid have a lot of taunts now? I'm not actually sure. I mean, I know they're trying to push this Druid of the Swarm nonsense. Uh, Druid of the four, six taunt. Is that still, is that in a thing now, or no? People stop playing uh, that I'm guy. I'm pretty sure. Right? Yeah, Druid of the Claw hasn't really seen play lately. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it would summon Druid of the Claw, but it will not summon Ancient of War. So, that's something to note. Um, I, I don't think this card's very cool. I mean, it's a beast. It's got that going for it. The stats suck, for sure. I Like I said, I don't think Druid has a lot of taunts, right? Or that are playable. Yeah, that's the main thing. But, I mean, yeah, you can shove a bunch of taunts into a deck, but does it do anything? Like, think about Taunt Warrior before the quest came out. That's what they're like. That's what they're trying to push on Druid, and Druid cannot do that. Yeah, I mean, I would see this seeing play if it was seven mana, but not at nine mana, especially for these stats. These stats are trash, just like my life. Yeah. You're not a fan. Yeah, alright, let's just go to the next one. Oh, it's so cute! Oh yeah, this little guy's adorable. One mana, play dead, hunter card, trigger a friendly minion's death wrap. I mean, it that says... I, what does faint death say? Does faint death say trigger all your death rattle? Uh, I think so. Okay, so, I mean, this is literally the lowest mana cost that they can make this effect without it being nuts. I mean, if, if it's worth... I mean, I played Death Rattle Hunter in uh, Wild, and it still didn't run cards like Princess Who Are In or Faint Death. You just don't need it. Like, it's not necessary. So, if that card type becomes so popular and good that you want this card, you have it. It's in standard. But I do not think people care about it. I could yeah. be wrong. I think, um someone drew the art for it and they're like damn it now we gotta make a card for it and thus we have yeah it. i mean it's, a it's adorable that's all i gotta say i don't i mean if, if that art type becomes a thing it'll probably see play but reminds me of your dog except for alive well i guess this dog's dead and yours is alive i mean yeah sure all right let's go to the next one what? 
three mana four three bear shark can't be targeted by spells or hero powers so i'm gonna go ahead and say i really like uh sharks and i don't really uh, care yeah. for bears though but i really like sharks i mean it, it's statted fine uh but hunter doesn't need three mana play yeah I don't think the card's it horrible. Might be I, don't think I just don't think it's great. If it was a 3 for 4 4, it'd be fucking amazing. But this just dies too easily to, like. There's a lot of 3 damage to cost, right? So this just dies. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 like, more. I think most importantly, like, the stats are terrible. And Hunter, like, whenever I play Hunter, I want the coin just so I can go coin 3, dro coin three drop into 3 drop because these have so many good 3-drops yeah. that you don't yeah. have room for stuff like this. Animal Companion, Kill Command, even Unleash the Hounds. I don't even think this will see play in Arena, though, unless, you know... Oh, like, in Arena, you really want those 2-drops that have higher attack, like the Raptor, even, Ooze, things like that. Or at least you used to. I don't know how if it's changed a lot. But when I was playing Arena, you'd want really good 2-drops... And the two drops kill this three drop, so you wouldn't even see play from that. I mean, like, this, what this card does really well is, uh, it's a good hit off Zomb Build a Beast. Ooh. Ooh. Like, those are good stats and a good ability to throw on something else. You know what else it's good for? Disenchanting dust. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's five dust. The most five dust you'll ever need. Anyway, that's it for Bear. Alright. Is this Rexar's, like, lost brother? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That looks a lot like Rexar. So, Stitch Tracker, uh, Battlecry, discover a copy of a minion in your deck for three mana. Three mana, two. I mean, the, the, the effect is great, but it, we go back to that thing of it's three mana and Hunter. Is it better than what you already run? I guess it might depend on the archetype. Like if you're playing a controlling hunter or a late game hunter or something like that, you can get a third Savannah high main. I mean, okay, so I just want to say that the effect is great. I just don't think you want it in hunter, which is why they printed it in hunter because it's not overbear. Yeah, but I, yeah. I could see myself being completely wrong on that assessment and be like, yeah, sure, okay, it's fine. Um, but. Yeah. The card is, I think, okay in arena. I don't know, those stats can kind of set you back because your three drop dies to your their two drop almost every time. Sometimes they're one drop. I don't think this card's bad. Um, I was thinking the same thing as you a few seconds ago, well, a minute ago, I guess, uh, that they do have a lot of three drops. But every time I play Hunter, be ever since the Buzzard nerf, which was like a year plus ago, I feel personally that it's actually hard to get cards in your hand. Like, after a while, if you didn't kill them, you're just trying to top deck. So I think this is pretty good. Just you, It'll just keep your hand refilled. Well, for one card, at least. And for Arena, I agree the stats suck. But in the same thing as earlier... I mean, it's good if you're already winning, though, you know? You can play this and refresh your hand for more, because even in Arena... Oh, in almost every card game, hand advantage is just the best. And I say that a lot about Hunter because, like I said, I've played Hunter in uh, ranked and arena, and I feel like a lot of times you just don't have the cards to keep up. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, like, it, it's, it's card draw, quote-unquote, in Hunter. So if you want that late game... Or even, like, because this isn't a tempo play. You don't play this to go, okay, I have board and now I have a card in my hand. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if they have that late game trying to, I guess mid-range hunter, maybe, but even mid-range hunter was pretty much just aggro hunter. Yep. Uh, yep. You, you, you could slot this in, but I don't think any of the current shells just take this card. I think you pretty much overhaul how hunter plays and then you, you can slot this in. Yeah. Well, I'll just disclaimer on what i said 
I think it's a good card, but I don't think it's better than the third drops that Hunter currently has. As example, um, Kill Command and Animal Companion. Right. So we got a new trap. This is my turn, right? Yeah. Two mana Venom Strike Trap. I do not like snacks or danger noodles as we call them, but this one is a secret. When one of your minions is attacked, summon a 2-3 poisonous cobra. I'll go ahead and say 2-3 for 2 mana poisonous is, I think that's a fair value. So, and it also helps, or it makes your opponent play carefullier or careful -er -er. So... I think that's good, but I mean, I don't think it's a great card or anything, because it's really easy to beat, because it's only a 2-3, but I mean, most Hunter Traps aren't great, the best ones like Frost Trap. I think it's a cool card, I just don't think it's amazing and great and playable. Yeah, I mean, Hunter's, Hunter's caught tra cut traps pretty much since Angoro, and you just don't need them. So, I mean, I, I might, uh, I'm just gonna go on a rant here. It's called Venom Strike Trap, but they named the mechanic Poisonous. Like, then they just name it Venomous. Because since it's poisonous, they have to eat the cobra in order to die. Oh, wow, that's a good point. Maybe, I mean, poisonous is an easier word for people that don't know the difference between poison and venom, though. I guess yeah. we're just uh, promoting a society of ignorance, though. Yeah, that's fine. Blizzard, the small indie company. Yeah, uh, those jerks. I don't know. If, if, if hunters magically see traps, I don't think this is first on the list. Let's just go to the next one. Yeah. Uh, exploding bloat bat. Four minute, two one. Death rattle. Still two damage to all enemy minions. What? Hunter. <coughs> Fuck, I can't have the hiccups. Give me one. Okay. Alright. So, anyway. Uh, four mana, two one, death rattle, destroy. Oh, dude, two, two damage to all enemy minions. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's Consecrate, right? With the two one body. Yeah, I guess. That's kind of cool, right? Right? I mean, again, if if an archetype that once this card is created, they have this card. But I don't know. I mean, it could be. I, I mean, we're going to get to it. The Death Knight, Death Knight Rexar has a similar effect that might push Hunter in this direction, which in this case... This card's pretty good. Like, this card's great. I'll go ahead and say I don't Biggest remember issue. what the Rexar do, set does, but you need to say spoilers oh, yeah. next in, time, in. you jerk. You're in for a treat. Um, but, yeah, I mean, current current Hunter does not want this. A uh, potential new archetype of Hunter might want this. So. What? Okay, first of all, I think everybody knows that knows anything Hearthstone watching this video. These stats are trash. Uh, the effect is pretty good. It's comparable to Consecrate, like uh, well said. But in my mind, I feel like Hunter already has explosive trap. So this thing, like, sucks. Unless Beast becomes popular, I guess. I mean, this is another thing to throw into Zombies. However, it's four mana to throw into the Zombies, so... I don't know what you want to put it on to make it worth your one. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming it's a Rexar's thing, which we will see in a bit. Build a beast? Zombies? Whatever. Oh, I, I don't know, dude. Alright, here you go. Back. I just... Okay, whatever. Uh, five mana, Corpse Widow. Your death roll cards cost two less. Five mana, four six. Beast. If anything, this card's 
fine for stats. And it's got a beast tag. Makes your death royal cards cost you less. Uh, I mean, are there a lot of five mana death rattles? That would be played in Hunter. I mean, Sludge Belcher and Wild. Well, you you don't have to have uh, five mana ones. You can play any, right? Right, but like, is there room on the curve for that? Um, I don't think so. Or I don't know. The stats, you're right, are fair. Um, if they actually make Death Rattle Hunter a thing, this is obviously really good. But it also runs in the problem that I said earlier with the uh, three mana two to find something in your deck or whatever. Because, like I said, you have a problem of running out of out of cards to play and you need more stuff in your hand. So if I feel like this card would be really good with the two or the three mana two two from earlier that you discover a minion from your deck. Just load it with good death rattles, play this thing. It's probably not going to die unless it gets fireballed or the other person already has board. So, and then if you have enough cards to keep fueling yourself, you'll probably win the game. I mean, like, the effect is good in the right shell, obviously. It just, is that shell playable? I mean, it might be. Yeah. I mean, it may think be of it this way. Let's let's think of. There's only one great Death Rattle Hunter card, which is arguably one of the best rares in the game, Savannah High Main, right? If you play this turn five, next turn, turn six, you have. Let's see. You can play a High Main and then the yeah, two mana hard. Adapt. Right? The two mana Adapt the Beast. That's a huge play. And, I mean, this. I think I really like this card because it has great stats. But like I said, the problem is you need cards in your hand, and if you just throw them all out and you get wiped, you're not face hunter if you're playing this. You know, you're gonna run out of cards, and your top deck won't always have charge to kill them off like a face hunter deck. You need some strategery with this card. Card's interesting. The effect is strong. It's whether or not the, it has a home yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Alright, uh, let's go to the next one, I guess. Wait, is this me or you? I've read the past two. It's your oh, did you? Okay, my bad. Two mana, Toxic Arrow. So we're not using Poisonous or Venomous in the text, or in the actual name of the card. We're just using Toxic Arrow this time. Deal 2 damage to a minion. If it survives, give it Poisonous. Interesting card. Yeah, I mean, like, so, you you obviously, you know, if you're going to kill something, uh, if something has 2 health, you want a Toxic Arrow. If it's not going to die, you want to shoot your own thing, as long as it doesn't die to the 2 damage. I mean, you're two for winning yourself on that case. Like, you either kill one of their stuff, or you two for one yourself. Right? Yeah, this card sucks. Why is it an epic? Man, if I get this, I'm probably going to get this, because I have horrible luck in packs. But, this card sucks. Like, I'm pretty sure you just want to run Mark instead of this card. Like, if you want a card like this, you just run Mark, right? Yeah. Because Hunter's Mark makes things die to hounds. So, and you can't shoot a hound and then give it poisonous. Oh, like, because it'll just fucking die. So. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone will make this card godlike in some build. But I don't see it. This card sucks yeah, in my mind. It's though. trash. I don't even think this card is good in Arena, which is fine because it's an epic. So hopefully you don't see it very often. Yeah. There are a lot of crappy epics, though, so. We can move on. All Mr. Right. Abominable All right. Bowman. And seven mana, six, seven. Death Rattle, summon a random friendly beast that died this game. Uh, probably not going to be play. 
Like, uh, I mean, because hunters just play stuff on curve, right? Yeah. One mana alley cat, two mana razor claw or whatever, three mana whatever strong three mana card you have. So by the time you get to seven, you're gonna go. Oh, I hope I reach some of my high main. Well, that's also assuming your high main died already after you just played it. Right. So, I mean, again, there might be some, like, Yogg Hunter. Yogg Hunter doesn't play that way. But you don't want this in Yogg Hunter, do you? No. So, so I mean, so, I, 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 Man, okay, so I'm torn about this card because I think the stats are fair for 7 mana. They're, they're fair. But, I agree with you in this effect is not that great. Now, I'm trying to think of a situation where it would be great. So, what I can think is if you only play good beast in your deck. And then, also, if you do the play dead on this with only having good beast in your deck. But, if you only have good beast in your deck, that means you had to put filler cards in. Which makes your deck shitty. So, I don't think this is playable. Stat-wise, in Arena, I think it's going to be good. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you just draft this for stats. Like, if there's not a better epic. Like, if it's between this and Toxic Epic, you go, oh, sweet, Abominable Bone. Yeah, really. <laughs> Alright. But I'm pretty sure All that right. Call of the Wild is an epic, so you just snatch that shit, right? Yep. Well, let's just go on to the next one. So, I think we both agreed that good stats... Uh, it's actually a good effect. I think it's a good effect. I just don't think it's a good effect in any deck that exists right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't see this slotting in, and if maybe create some weird late game hunter, control hunter, as everyone wants it to be. It, sure, maybe, if there's a good beast that you're playing. They need to increase draw cards in hunter, not add stupid shit like this. Eh, whatever. Next card is four mana... 5-4 Professor Putricide, which I think in World of Warcraft I thought he was cool, so let's see. After you play a secret, put a random hunter secret into the battlefield. Alright, that's really confusing so far to me. Not the effect, but I feel like they were trying to push Death Rattle, and now they're trying to push secrets, which are not the same deck. Alright. Yeah, I don't... I don't... I, okay, so this obviously it has it has a deck like a secret deck around it that you you don't I don't think you run this in a, a hunter deck that has four secrets in it like most of them do I think you put this in a deck that's dedicated towards secret. Yeah, I mean I think it's a cool card though for sure. You just I don't know it's it's hard to say because you'd need the three mana three four right to make this really good. And if you play this in Wild, you're ob If you play Wild Hunter, I don't know the decks right now. I want to say the uh, Mad Scientist is probably one of the best cards, right? That you can do in Wild. Well, well maybe it's just for me. Well, oh. I mean, Mad Scientist was a silly card in Hunter and Maid. Yeah, but and it wouldn't work in this deck. So, because this one's if you play it, not if it randomly comes on the field because Blizzard made a broken card. Right, yeah. So, I mean, this... Uh, Mad Scientist will not trigger Professor Future Side, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not like there's a bunch of bad secrets, but having enough secrets in your deck to make this worth it makes your deck pretty bad. What are you talking about, dude? I think half the Hunter secrets suck. The only one I really like is Frost Trap, and you can easily play around that one. Yeah, but when it's free and it doesn't necessarily cost you a card, they're not bad. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that, and I agree the fact that you'd have to put bad cards to make this good. Because, in my mind, the secrets that come up the head is, or on top of my head, rather, is Frost Trap. So, you have two secrets in my deck that involves this guy so far. And adding two secrets and a guy that benefits to two secrets doesn't justify making the entire rest of the deck, so. Like, I think 
minimum you need like eight secrets to justify playing future sight. But I could be wrong. Well, I mean, you're building a deck like, well, on him, right? And it's like, Hunter doesn't have enough draw to even think of getting him early. And Hunter Traps are not that amazing late game, right? I guess, like I said, Frost Trap, that trap is amazing late game if you hit something big. But I obviously never won a game with Misdirection before. This Misdirection's pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. He's a cool card, I just don't think he's good. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 he'll, he'll go into a fun deck with uh, Cloak Hunters, you know, make all your zero secrets probably. Like, it, it'll go into a, a fun deck. Yep. Alright, you're up. With this Power Ranger. Right, so with... That's right. New uh, Death Knight hero card, Deathstalker Rexar, 6 mana. Battlecry, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions, gain 5 armor. And then his hero power is build a beast, craft a custom zombie beast, which I believe is you discover twice, and then you just literally put those two cards together. Mana cost, power, health, effect. And you put that card into your hand. So. Oh, right on. So, uh, favorite parts about this card? It costs 6, which, mm -hmm. other than the shaman one, is the cheapest one. And it has a consecrate attached to it. That's kind of cool. Like that's that's pretty sweet. In the deck that would want to play this, this is perfect. Uh, but you pretty much would need to build a deck with this card in mind. Like again, you don't just slot this in and be like, okay, let's make this work. Yeah, I like that it's cheap. I haven't actually looked at too many of the cards, I guess. But I do like it how it's cheap, and the Consecration effect I don't really care for, but that's just because I compare it to the Explosive Trap still. And if they still have stuff on the board, you're probably not doing good anyway. I guess this could turn it around, though, so I'm wrong. Uh, build a Beast sounds like one of the coolest effects I've seen so far, though. But I don't like how it goes in your hand. I guess if it didn't go in your hand, it'd be a broken card, though. Oh, yeah, it'd be busted. So I think it's something, a something cool card, about. but I don't think it's good. Something I'm curious about, which I haven't figured, uh, I haven't guessed, is uh, if you have, if the card you make goes over 10 mana, are you just screwed, or does it just cost it? No idea. So, I mean, I don't know. Because, like, if you have, like, uh, what's the name of the hunter legendary from La Angora? Uh, King Raptor Dude. Hunter. King Raptor Dude. Wait, maybe it is, hang on. Yeah, it's the one that's a 7 for a 9-9 nine, nine attack, anything that gets played right? Hunter? I thought that was Warrior. If that's Hunter, until you, you get hunt Bat and, like, Greater Sandworm. Yeah. No, the warrior one is uh, deal, kill everything that's damaged. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They're both T Rexes, that's why I get confused. Anyway, so it, it, if if this card uh, sees play, it'll pretty much be its own archetype, like Control Hunter, quote unquote. Otherwise, we'll just see the fancy same old mid range hunter. Yeah. Well, this, I don't well, think not uh, not late game focused hunters want. Dom, uh, build a beast over. Uh, two deal two damage to the hero. Yeah, I think it's a cool card. I don't know if it's good. I'm not gonna say it is good. I don't know. I don't have a good guess. The build a beast, like I said, is really cool. Yep. So I think we're diving straight into good old. Mage is my favorite Mod class. One mana, Breath of Syndragosa. Deal two damage to a random enemy and freeze it. That's a really fair effect, to be as Arcane Blast was being played. I guess Arcane Blast could deal a lot more, but in a stall mage deck, this is not bad. Or a Kazakus. I mean, I don't think it's amazing or anything, but it's, it's a very fair card. I could definitely see this getting picked in Arena, for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. Uh, I, I maybe tempo one? Because it's just so cheap and it deals with a threat. Like, if it doesn't kill something, it stalls a turn. So, like, it, either way, it, it's always going to deal with a threat for at least a I mean, uh, I know it's in a different class, but if you can compare it to Frost Shock, which Frost Shock does not see play, but it's a random Frost Shock. Which Frost Shock might see play after this set because of all the weird interactions they gave Shaman. I don't know. Uh, uh, the cards, okay. Like, it's not, it's by no means bad. It just. Oh, it wait, I didn't read the word random, or I forgot the word random. That changes a lot. It's, I think it's definitely good against rush decks, for sure. Freezing something against someone trying to kill you as fast as possible is really good. Don't really care for the random part. But now if I think of it, if it was not random, it would be a broken card. So. All right. All right. Yeah, it might be busted. But yeah, it's, 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 it's by no means broken. It's, I don't think it's unplayable. I just don't know where it goes. Yeah, I definitely think it goes either in... I don't even know if it goes in tempo, right? It, it can't go in tempo because tempo... Well, it shouldn't go in tempo. Right? So it'd be in a stall or a Kazakasa deck, I think. Or control, I think it's called. It might go into a... Uh, uh, Flame Waker deck. Just because Flame Waker is deck. Ah, uh, I remember that guy. He was pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. Go ahead. Close yeah. Yeah. Cold Raid, 3 mana, 3 4. Battle Cry, if an enemy is frozen, draw a card. Solid Arena card. 3 mana, 3 yep. 4 is vanilla stats, potential yep. of, Like, I don't. I doubt it sees standard. Play. Or, uh, wild play. But, it, it's a fine card in Arena. That's about all I gotta say. Yeah, that's kind of what I say. Um, I don't know how great the Frozen effect is, so, like, I don't know why they're trying to push Frozen. I don't think Frozen's an amazing effect, unless you're against Warrior or Paladin. Maybe Rogue, not even that much, but Warrior or Paladin, for sure, Frozen's good, but I don't see you throwing a lot of Frozen. It's too, it's too risky, because if you're playing a lot of Frozen and you're against another control deck, or, like, a mage that's gonna burst you down... Frozen is useless. Yeah, I mean, it, it includes minions as well, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, whatever. Three mana, Frozen Clone. That's so close to Frozen Throne. It's just a few letters difference. Secret. After your opponent plays a minion, add two copies of it into your hand. So, it's not bad for control or tempo, but mirror entity is better for tempo. And in control, you're probably going to use ice block and ice barrier. You don't really have slots for this, do you? Yeah, I mean, like, your opponent plays around it the same way they play against, play around uh, mirror entity, so... We all know how poor Mirror Entity can be, can be. And like you said, Mirror Entity is a better card for tempo because you just go, all right, well, thanks for the free creature, and then you give it charge. Like, yep, it's fine. So this, yeah, I, I don't... Any deck that wants to play this is probably already playing Mirror Entity and probably doesn't want this after that. Like, yeah. I can't think of yeah. when you would want your opponent's minions... Other than mirror entity, this yeah. is this is negative tempo. And it's a cool concept. This is worse though. Than and yeah, I mean the, the the card's fine. Like it, it, it's somehow while being very similar to duplicate, it's incredibly worse than du duplicate. Yeah, because duplicate, you normally you won't put that many shitty cards in your deck. So. Yeah. Yeah, it probably doesn't do anything, but it's cool to have, I guess. Ooh. So, Ooh. moving on, a 2-mana 1-3 elemental. Your hero power also freezes the target. I think this card's cool. 
in an elemental mage, which is kind of gaining some, had some legs back when I played a lot. I can see this doing something, something. Uh, I, I don't like that they worded it like that, and then came out with new hero powers for everybody. Uh, okay, oh, never mind, I forgot what, uh, uh, DK Jaina's, uh, hero power was. I, the card is, is cool. Uh, DK Jaina tries to have an elemental theme, so, uh, you might put this in there, and it's still pretty good, so. Alright, well, I think the card sucks, so I'm gonna throw that out there, but I don't know what DK Jaina does other than the, I think she does lifesteal, right? And an, summons an elemental, right? Something like that. Either way. Your elemental way. Oh, okay. Well, these stats are trash. Um, this thing's probably going to die right after you play it, and it's not going to kill anything. Uh, if you're pinging too much, you're probably going to lose this mage anyway. So. I think it's trash. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably only slots into an elemental deck. And even then. But the effect is cool, I guess. Yeah. Alright, so, moving on. Three mana, Doomed Apprentice. Oh, it's just a dead version of Sorcerer's Apprentice, but cost one more. Two, or three mana, two health. Your opponent's spells cost one more. So it's like an opposite effect, but it's three mana. Uh, which, that's a huge difference. 3 mana versus 2 mana is huge difference. If this was 2 mana, it would be amazing. But 3 mana with these stats, I do not like it. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if it was 2 mana, the card would be busted. If it, since it's 3 mana, it's a little bit more balanced. Uh, I, I, you might play this in Tempo Mage. Like, just... You think so? I mean, it knocks your opponent off tempo, doesn't it? Yeah, but the stats are trash, and it probably... I mean, if you already had a perfect curve, yes. But if you did not have a perfect curve, this thing will just die and not do anything for an extra mana compared to Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, it, 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 it's cool that it exists. Uh, yeah, I like that they're adding effects like this, so. If it does anything, it's probably in tempo. I don't think you put that into, uh, what's it called? Freeze Man. Or somewhere. So, next up we have the Ghastly Conjurer. 4 mana, 2-6. Okay. Battle Cry, add a mirror image spell to your hand. Okay. Okay. I don't know what. Oh. Uh, I... Well, I'll go ahead and say I think this is really great in arena. Uh, it also will be great against. Well, it's also going to be good, not great, against faster decks. Because it'll give you a hard body, and then you'll put two talents, so you can start killing stuff and saving yourself from dying. But at the same time, will it save you more than Ice Barrier will? I don't think so. Well, I mean, I guess maybe because it'll kill some stuff off. I think in the average situation, this will kill at least two smaller creatures. So. I just, I, there's better four mana spells, right? Like, yep. Oh yeah, definitely. There's just better cards to play. And it's not like this card adds to an archetype or anything. It's just... 4 mana, 2, 6, draw a card. Draw a very mediocre card. Yeah. I mean, the 4 mana thing you can compare it to, even in Arena, is Water Elemental, right? Which is way better. But I think this will see play in Arena, for sure. 2, 6 is not bad in Arena for 4 mana. Especially 2 6 gives yourself an extra card. Slow down there, Tony. It's shade. 
jerk. Alright. Yeah, whatever. Three mana. See Mulacrum? Am I saying that right? Simulac. Whatever. Copy the lowest cost minion in your hand. Wow, I think that's actually pretty good. Uh, depending on what's in your hand, I guess. Yes, this could be another Doomsayer, yeah. which could win you the game. Yeah, I think I think uh, in some sort of fancy like combo mage, some creature based combo mage, you want this because like, um, like let's say quest mage, you're like, oh shit, I need my other sorcerer's apprentice or something. You just go simulacrum, boom, there. Yeah. Something along those lines, yeah. you know? Like, uh, it's not bad, and it can, it can get you another Antonitis, like a second Antonitis, so you just, like, kind of throw the first one out there as, like, fodder. Or you go, uh, it sucks that you can't go, like, Antonitis Simulacrum, get another Antonitis, and a fire. But. So, how does this work with, um, things like Arcane Golem? Or not, well, that's not the one, right? Uh, whatever the Golem is when you cast a spell, the one that was in the Tower of Medivh. Will this work on the effect that it currently is, or the one it started with? Okay. And I'm assuming that if you have two minions at the same cost, it chooses a random one. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean... I, I think it's great. Right. I, I think that... I don't think you put it in any mage deck. I don't think it slots in anywhere, but I definitely think that if you... Uh, it's, it's a combo piece of some potential combo that I can't think of. Yeah. I think it's pretty solid. Yeah. No, I agree. Ugh, Next God. up. Ugh, I hate Glacial this Mysteries. I hate <laughs> Eight mana for each one of your secrets in, from your deck to the battlefield. Alright, so this card's effect is powerful. Problem. Cost eight. Like... That card, that's incredibly powerful to potentially put two secrets onto the battlefield. However, decks that want, like, demand secrets at a certain time have ways to get their secrets at a certain time. Like, I don't think you want to spend your whole turn getting an ice block onto the battlefield. I think this goes in a deck that has the Arcane Runner in it, or Crystal Runner, I think it's called, whatever. But I don't uh, that I don't know if they trigger, but that's like the type of deck you play this in. So you'd have a lot of secrets because, which is a problem because, uh, in say the ten, or Crystal Runner or whatever fuck her name is, you generally only have tempo secrets in your deck, and if you're playing a control mage, you'll probably only have control secrets. So this goes in a deck that you mix up random secrets in, I guess. But it also has the problem of it being 8, which is terrible. I think it's a cool card, but I don't think it'll see play. Just, it's too unreliable. It's not Mysterious Challenger. That's its issue. Yep. Just give me a Mysterious Challenger. Like, if it was a... It cost 8, but it also came with a 6-6 six, six body. Yeah. See, the thing about Mysterious Challenger, that could only work in Paladin because... Paladin secrets suck unless you have a lot of them. <laughs> you are obviously not one of those people that put the uh, six mana five five add a random paladin card to your in your mage decks. Nope. You played that card just to get mysterious challenger every once in a while and just lost. Ugh. Hard pass. All right. Yeah. 8 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, Syndragosa. So, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think in Game of Thrones, one of the dragons will die and get resurrected by the Night King. Unrelated to this video, but that's what it reminded me of. Battle Cry, summon two zero one one Frozen Champions. Do we know... Oh, no, it says it right in the next card. Frozen Champion is a 1 mana, zero one one Death Rattle, add a random legendary to your hand. What? Okay, I suddenly really like this card. It's it's not going to go in control, I think, and you could also get two shitty legendaries. 
but it fills your hand with two extra cards. So it's like, in a way, a uh, arcane intellect with not your deck with this card. And you get... I mean, you can ping your own guy, too. And it's a really yeah. solid volley. Yeah, and, and, and it, it's also a dark. It's also a dark. So, like, uh, like you were saying, this doesn't really slot into Tempo or Freeze Mage or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it's pretty terrible in Tempo and Freeze. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, mm -hmm. something like a Kazakus, Wild Dragon Mage, you just want some late game stuff. This this could be fun. Like I, I picture, I definitely know that Brian Kibler is going to be playing this card. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, I don't think it does anything fancy. Man. Yeah. I think it's just there to exist. So we move it's a pretty on good standalone to, uh, card though. You you probably almost auto pick this in a arena. Yeah, probably. It doesn't die to BGH, though, so how good can it be? Yeah. Well. Okay, so, uh, another Death Knight, Frost, Lich, Jaina, 9 mana, uh, Battle Cry, summon a 3-6 Water Elemental. Your Water Elementals have Life Steal this game, gave 5 armor. Your <clears throat> Hero Power is Icy Touch, deal 1 damage if it kills a minion, summon a uh, Water Elemental. So. Uh, this is what I was saying, like, you kind of have an elemental sub-theme, like Pyros, like, like a, a elemental, element, elemental, elemental mage was a thing for a bit, uh, just a bit, I just need, but anyway. Yeah, anyway, uh, so, I think if you can, uh, like before, I don't think this slots into Freeze Mage or... Uh, tempo mage, but in its own standard build of elemental mage, this I think has a spot. I really like this card in a way. First of all, like I said earlier, mage is my favorite class. Oh wow, why does it look like Jaina got like 20 extra pounds on her? Okay, whatever. Not important. I was just not important, but I wasn't being mean. I was like, damn, she's thick. <laughs> yeah, Jaina is thick as fuck. Um, so, nine uh, mana? Uh, yeah, nine mana is, in my opinion, not very cool. Like, it could have easily cost eight, but that might be busted, I guess. Potentially getting two, three, six water elementals with ice steel, but I don't think. Nine yeah. mana is a lot. Like, that ability is pretty awesome, though. Icy Touch. I don't like the icon they used. Some creepy hand. They could have did something else. Uh, uh, yeah, this is my good hand. <laughs> yeah, this is my good hand! Uh, the battle cry for 8 mana is not bad. And then... your elemental, like It's going to be great in an elemental deck, I'm sure. Because if you have this in an elemental deck, you don't need Frost Barrier, right? Because Frost Barrier just helps you live longer, while this helps you heal, which does the same thing. So it opens up some space for that. But, eh. I don't have Pyros either way, so I don't care. I have Pyros. I'm pulling for this. Nerd. Alright. Ooh, so Paladin. Ooh, Paladin. I, Paladin. I did look at the Paladin hero yesterday, or the day before, and it's pretty awesome, so... Uh, so this is a 1-mana, one 1-1, one, one, Righteous Protector, Taunt, Divine Shield. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a really good card. Because Argent, uh, Squire is a good card, so. I mean, it, this is a Anoyatron, almost. Now, Anoyatron was a mech, which made Anoyatron bust. But, like you said, this is a Squire. So any deck that wants Squire, any Paladin that wants Squire, can just run this or both. This card is fine. This card is more than okay, and they really push Divine Shield with interactions in Paladin this set. So, yeah, I think any deck that was looking to play a card like this has it, and it has a. It's fine. Like it's it's perfectly. Yeah. Another thing to mention is um, 
Divine Shield is one of the better creature effects, for sure. So. Because you have to knock out the Divine Shield before you kill it in most cases. So. I mean, yeah. The, uh, Divine Shield is essentially infinite damage. Like, infinite health. So it's a one mana, one mana infinite taunt. Yep. So, it's cool. So, next up we have a two mana Dark Conviction. Set at its minions attack and health to three. Uh, I like this I don't know where it goes. Like, what was the, what was the name of that four mana card? Like, now it'll, uh, oh, four mana three four that had this. Like, that card was awesome. That card was sweet. Oh, Keeper of Volgar, I think, oh, right? Or something like that, I think, right? Or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Like, that card was great because it was just like, alright, I'll make my 1-1 one, one into a 3-3 three, three, and then bash, or I'll kill your giant fucker or make it a 3-3. Three, three. Like, that effect is strong. However, without the body, I don't think this card sees play. Yep, I would agree 100% and have nothing else to say about that. Yeah, I mean, and, and Sunkeeper Tarim uh, is pretty much a staple in, like, all Paladin these days. At least the last time I played, it was everywhere. Like, any any aggressive slash mid-range slash control paladin that runs same key for turn. So. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Alright, four mana. Chill Blade Champion. It's a 3-2 charge lifesteal. Uh, if you're making a... Oh, wait, I thought this had Divine Shield for some reason in my head. Charge lifesteal? I mean, it's not bad. Uh... I wouldn't say it's good either, though. It's just, like, average. If it had Divine Shield also, though, it would be awesome. Busted? It would be busted if I had time. Uh, yeah, I, all I can say is, like, I think this card costs one too much. Too much. Like, it should, I don't yep. I think it's fine at three. Like, three mana. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> but, like, well, there's that Argent Sports Rider. Three mana, two, one, charge. Divine Shield. Uh, this still dies to that, but it costs four. Mm. Like, I, I, I just think, one, it costs, it'll never see standard play because it costs four in Paladin, it doesn't do enough. Yep. But I think this could yep. really cost three, and it's still been okay in arena. So, this, oh man, this card, like, charge, you're trying to kill them, and then Lysealer, you're trying to live. I don't think this card's good at all. And I, I agree with you that it could cost three mana, but you also have to consider, like, the Argent uh, dude you mentioned was a 2-1 charge for three mana. So this one would be, like, just way overpowered compared to that. And if you compare this to Wolf Rider, this is just blatantly better if it was three mana. So it's... I understand why they put it as four mana, because it would be, like, way too power creep if you put it at three. So. Oh yeah, I forgot about Wolf Rider, but then again, I don't. You don't see many paladins running Wolf Rider. Right? Yeah. Really, you don't see the uh, Rush Paladin where you just buff everything and Wolf Rider's overpowered as shit. He comes out as like a like you know five three or some shit. Three or some shit. Oh, hand buff. I didn't know hand buff played Wolf Rider. I thought they played like more. No, there's like different versions. I've seen one. It's not a popular build, but it's like you just put a shitload of charge stuff. Uh, well, this might see play in hand buff. I doubt it because it costs four. Yeah. And I, yeah, I take back that it, it could have cost three because it probably couldn't because I forgot about Wolf Rider. But uh, since it costs four, it definitely doesn't see play. Yep, I agree. I agree. Anything outside of hand buff, and even then, I don't think hand buffs where you want to go for with Paladin these days. I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and go to the stand. next one. Yeah. Desperate stand, two mana, give a me a minion, death rattle, return to select one health. Uh, I like this. Like, so uh, it it changes uh, resurrect, like old school resurrect when secrets could trigger on either turn. It was really good because you could trade properly. This is a homage back to that. Like, you throw this on something, you trade, and then you get your guy back. Yeah. So, now, granted, it costs two mana instead of one. Uh, I 
don't know what decks this just goes into. But it could just be like any control paladin. You win this as a one-up. Get your Tyrion back or your Ragnaros back or something. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on this is, and I've tried to build a deck like this. That's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, I got uh, Redemption, I think it is, or Turn 1. Is that the secret? And I filled the deck up with Divine Shield cards. Which makes that insanely good. Because, you know, if you get a Sunwalker back on the field, it doesn't matter if it has one health. You're probably at least wasting one or two creatures on it, depending if you break a shield or not. So, in, in my imaginary Divine Shield deck, this card is amazing. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it either goes into a Divine Shield deck like that, or maybe a uh, control paladin you're in this little one up to get, like I said, you're carrying back first. Okay. So next one is Howling Commander. It is a three mana, two two. Battle cry draw a divine shield minion from your deck. Uh that that could be really good. I can't think of that many three drops in Paladin, but I wanna say you have space for this though. You could you can make this card. Add Tyrion to your deck. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you, you just don't put any other Divine Shields in your deck, and you're okay, three mana draws here. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't do that strategy. If I see where you're going with it, the problem with that is the same problem you have with uh, Mad Scientist. If you only put, like, two and you draw the two secrets, then it's useless. So basically, if you start your deck, or you start in your hand with Tyrion, this is just a vanilla 3 2 2. So I would personally add more Divine Shields than that. But yes. I see where you're going with that. I would say yeah, I mean, uh, switch it and add good Divine Shield stuff in your deck. Because there, there's a lot of good Divine Shield things. We can agree. And well, I can almost argue that most Divine Shield stuff is good, or if not all, just because they take one or two hits. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think this goes into the deck that runs the 1 mana 1 1 taunt divine shield, but I don't know if it goes into like hardcore control paladin either. So there's some happy medium in there that this might slot in. I could see in wild you make a deck with this, the 1 1 taunt thing, Annoyatron, uh, whatever the bigger Annoyatron is, Sunwalker, and Tyrion, and Blood Knight. And the cards that, like, Redemption and the one we just passed, Desperate Stand. I could see a really good deck like that. Because you just have infinite taunts and stuff, and you just draw them in your hand, and when they die, they come back with one health or back in your hand. I mean, I, I think it's a pretty fun deck. I might try. Yeah, no, it's dope. Uh, it definitely has, has some legs. Uh, so, next up, we have four mana... Arrogant Crusader, 4 mana 5 2, Death Rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, summon a 2 2. So, right off the bat, I don't see this in team play in Standard or Wild. Because it's 4 mana in Paladin that isn't better than their current card. Yep. In my opinion. Uh, but, it's pretty good in Arena. Like, so, it deals 5, so you're never really going to want to trade in with it. You just punch them in the face every turn until they kill it, and when they kill it, you get a 2-2. So, it seems decent to me. I don't know if it's how highly it's picked. Uh, but the point is, is that they statted it correctly so that your opponent wants to kill it. So. Uh, I mean, the 5-2 I think is good, but the... Oh, wait, no. Hold on. Let me reword that. 5-2 is... It dies way too easy. Yeah, four mana. I understand the effect on it, though. The only problem I see is if they have almost any taunt in the game, this card sucks. Well, actually, no. Oh, yeah. it, well, it might kill this thing with taunt, but that's about it. The taunt's gonna attack you before that happens, though. So, you're doing, like... They'll, say if they have a Senjin and you play this guy, they're gonna hit you in the face before you kill it, and then you won't get the 2-2 two -two effect. So, you're going to lose, like, half of your card, and they dealt three damage to you. That's the example I'm giving. Yeah, I mean, like, this, this card 
loses to taunt like any. But it's stated to the point where if they don't have taunt, they want to kill it because it's just going to punch them in the face every turn for a shit. Mm -hmm. But if you're building the Divine Shield imaginary deck that I'm thinking of, you could also use the 2 2 put Divine Shield on something. That makes this card amazing suddenly. <laughs> Alright, next card. Light Sorrow. 4 mana, 1 4. After a friendly loses Divine Shield, gain 1 attack. Alright, I think this card sucks. Uh, yep. There's too many things that need to happen before it becomes good. That's all I'm going to say. It but even has shitty art. If you have a board with full of Divine Shield videos, and then play this, and then trade them all in, you get like a 4 mana 4-4 four, four weapon. You're okay. right. You're right, friend. Okay, in the imaginary scenario you're thinking of, if you have 7 minions that you somehow break all of them before you attack, you have a 8-4 weapon, which is 32 damage. In this imaginary situation, which is nigh impossible, unless it was staged, Yes, this card is the best weapon in the game, I think. This card reminds me of, uh, the, uh, what's the name of that card? The three mana weapon. Sword of Justice. Like, almost, maybe almost the opposite. Like, so Sword of Justice, you give up your third turn and have great tempo afterwards. This one expects you to go one, two, one drop, three drop, two drop, three drop. This is your four drop. And then your 1, 2, and 3 drop all have Divine Shield. And they don't lose it by the time you get your 4 drop. So, like, a lot has to go right for you to get any value out of this card. Yep. And this card yep. is only on par, like, only better than its mana cost when it's an Assassin play. So you have to lose 2 Divine Shields before using any charges in order to get your mana's worth out of this. How, how much mana does the one guy that puts Divine Shield on adjacent minions cost? Is he 7 or 6 or 7? Adjacent minions. Uh, seven. Seven? Oh, never mind. This card sucks. Even the art is crap. Yeah, this card doesn't even do it. So, moving on, we have ourselves a black guard. Whoa. Black guard. That's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say IYG believes guards can be any color. And go ahead. African American guard. Uh, so, three, six, nine. I'm sorry, uh, six mana, three, nine. Uh, whenever Lol. your hero is Lol. healed, <laughs> deal that much damage to a random enemy minion. So, I think this effect is cool, like, just imagining blasting something for 20 after you've forbidden healing yourself for 20. Sounds awesome. Uh, I just, I don't know where it goes. Like, I couldn't tell you where it goes. Uh, obviously, if it goes anywhere, it's into a late game control paladin. Like with Lay on Hands, uh, Ragnaros Light Lord, which turns Light Lord into old, old, almost OG Ragnaros. Oh, you're right. Oh, oh, no, never mind. Right. It's not that good. It's not whenever something is healed, whenever your hero is healed. So it, 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 like, one out of every four times it does that. Uh, with the uh, Death Knight, it's still pretty cool. And so, like, the, the card is cool. I just, for six mana and those stats, I don't know where it well, my thoughts on this is 6 mana for a 3 9 is really good. I definitely think it's going to pick picked in Paladin even if you don't get heals or whatever in an arena. Just because the stats are really good. Um, the ability is pretty cool too, but you'll have to... At, to make it viable, you want to have at least 4 heal cards in your deck, maybe more. Uh, I, this does also work with Lifesteal, I assume. So, and I mean, you're blasting random minions. Which is great, because, you know, either, you know, Knife Juggler, when it hits face, you're like, damn it. Unless, you know, they're really low, but normally hitting minions is good. And it'll, it'll get around uh, taunts or poisonous even. So, you know, oh man, I better heal myself so this thing might kill that poisonous thing. So I think this is a pretty solid card in both Arena and if you build a good standard deck for it. Wait a minute. When does... How will this work with uh, True Silver Champion? 
you heal and then deal two damage. Okay, so what if you the two damage from this guy kills the minion that you're attacking? Then you just don't attack it. That that effect has happened. That's happened before with um, explosive trap, right? Right, but then when that was the case, didn't you still get your attack off? Like, couldn't you still attack after that? Uh, I don't remember. I know there's been times where you you would attack something. Oh wait, no, that's knife juggler. I'm thinking. So you'd attack a uh, or someone would attack your knife juggler, and the two one secret paladin thing came out. The the guy that's like get, the get down guy, and then the get down guy would a trigger knife juggler shooting that other guy, and then it would just stop the attack because it's dead. So I'm assuming it would just stop the attack and you're going to just attack someone else? Yeah. Yeah. You get and, yeah. yeah, maybe. We'd have to test this card or see someone else test it. That's pretty cool. Does he have Frostborn, yeah, no, though? Does he have... No, he's got some random rune blade. I'm pretty sure you get that in the Death Knight leveling. Oh, uh, right on. Pretty oh. solid card, though. Oh. oh, it's your turn, Tony. Here's our boy. Five mana, one seven, Bolvar, Fireblood. Divine Shield, after a friendly mo minion loses Divine Shield, gain two attack. So even in my imaginary Divine Shield deck, this card is trash. Uh, it, if you guys remember the first Bolvar uh, four dragon, he sucked, and I think this card sucks. Now, I agree, this card's terrible. Um, however... Bulbar Four Dragon had one of the coolest entrances in the game. In the game, I think that still holds true. What about this guy? What does this guy so, do? What about I I don't know. That's why I'm excited. Like I, I, I this card will not see play, but I want to see it play because I think that the entrance is going to be off the chain. Enough. What's Bulbar's entrance? Uh, he summons the Alliance Head and. It's, uh, said something really cool in the music. I don't know, it's just, it's on. Okay. You're dope. You can find it. You're dope. Play it. But it uh, so, my favorite card in the whole goddamn set is Uther of the, of the Everblade. Uh, nine mana. Battle Cry equipped a 5-3 weapon with lifesteal. Gain 5 armor. So, I, I'm pretty sure it's already confirmed that the 5-3 weapon is not corrupt uh, Ashbringer, which is a mistake. Yep. Uh, but anyway, uh, his hero power becomes uh, the four horsemen, two, two mana, obviously it's hero power. So we're in a two, two horsemen. If you have four, all four, destroy the enemy hero. Either way, otherwise, summon Exodia, you win the game. Uh, so, a couple reasons that this card is my favorite card in the whole set is one, I love Control Paladin, uh, and this card is fantastic. So, nine mana, you essentially heal your hero for ten. And then ten more two turns after that, while pre doubling your hero power's effectiveness and giving you an alternate win condition, and you're still control paladin, like some of the best late game only rivaled to priest, which your hero power gets better against current priest. Unfortunately, your hero power almost loses to DK priest. But anyway, like if if control this. And the best part about this card is that you don't need to build around this. This just slots into control power. Yeah, I think this card's really fucking cool. Um, my gripe with it, though, is... Ashbringer... What is Ashbringer? That's a 5-3, right? It It's supposed to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest, sword, I think think in all of World of Warcraft history. Well, I guess this just says weapon, but come on, like, you're just gonna make, it's, it, they do weird shit like this all the time, like, Illidan Storm Rage was a 7-5 summon Flames of Azanoth when you play a spell, and then some random doctor named Dr. Boom was a 7-7 seven, seven summon Boombots. So it's just like, you're telling me this random doctor with a giant nose is stronger than the Lord of Outland? That's like what it's saying to me. Ashbringer is a sword that destroys undead, but this guy's weapon is somehow better. Whatever. 
So, uh, the weapon is called Grave Vengeance, and it's a hammer. Ugh, lame. I'm gonna see if that was a weapon in a real while. Uh, we can, it we, is, uh, I feel it, like it should be a 4-3 weapon, but I understand why they made it a 5-3. But I think, personally, it should be a 4-3. Uh, the four horsemen effect, that is just really good. Two, for, two mana for summoning a 2-2 two -two is already good. But giving you the alternate thing to kill your opponent is amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, the effect that you win after summoning four is icing on a cake. Like, just summoning two twos is cool enough. To... Let me put it this way. if you Would you play a weapon that was a 5-3 lifesteal and gives you five armor? I mean, for nine mana, I'd consider that. I mean, I think the effect is, like, a six to seven mana effect but or the weapon rather if it was just a five three lifesteal weapon I, i'd do that for like five to six mana and now you're adding five armor and ability to summon horsemen and win the game yeah this card's really good so far definitely the best new death knight hero we've seen and, uh, yeah, and I think what adds to how good it is is that it just slots into the current build. Of oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You don't have to build around this like uh, the, a few of the other ones we've seen. The ones we've seen. Right. Yeah. So, good old Priesty Priest is next. Uh, I'm actually going to stop this video right now and put it in... Maybe we can do the next part next time. Because right now we're on an hour and almost 40 minutes so I'm, i send this to sheena with uh, part one and yeah we'll be back next time with the rest thank you for watching iyg this has been shade and kohala make sure to subscribe make sure to subscribe why why They call themselves Imagine Your Goddess. What a bunch of a holes. Ah, hooked on a feeling. I'm high on believing that you're in love with me. I'm hooked on a feeling. Well, guys, did you know that Imagine Your Goddess has its own web store? Check out all the neat merchandise, small scrolls, play mats. Don't forget about the acrylics and the other goodies. Oh, Helen. Yeah, I'm here. Get them in store at the Stand Up Series, or check us out online at our website, shopiyg.com. We're always adding new stuff. Imagine, Imagine Your, your Goddess. goddess.